Vice President Jaffe. Present. Director Lather. Here. Director LeHue. I am here. And President Christensen. I'm not hearing anything. Oh, you know what? I forgot to push the green button. Sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So uh, it's board members' opportunity to remove items from the consent agenda. Nothing from me. Um, can I just, um, there was a, one of the items on the consent was 4.1.0. I don't want to remove it unless it's necessary, but in the motion, it's missing a zero on the amount for the allocation from OCR for security upgrades. Okay. It's, it says 25 comma zero zero. There's just missing a zero. Um, and if the board would like, uh, when you approve the consent as is, we could do it as amended. Um, if you, of course, if you prefer, we also can pull for um, 410. Thank you. That's all. Whatever works. I just wanted to make sure that it's was correct. In that zero. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see any reason to remove it. We'll just approve as amended. I'll make the motion. Oh wait, we well, have to. We'll have um, a public hearing. Public, hearing. Uh, public, public comment. Has, uh, come up, come yeah. Here, is it working? Yeah, thank you. Okay, Steinbrenner. Um, I I want to point out a few things on the consent agenda that I found of interest. On page 15, the water consumption is wonderfully low. <laughs> and um, it, the, the district customers are doing a great job. I, I do note that it's 9.85% below what you have budgeted to bring in as money. So um, I'm sure that we'll be seeing some rate increases coming along the way. But it's hard for customers to swallow that when they've been conserving so hard. On page 23, item 4.6, um, I wonder what the, the change order number four with Black and Beach was and how much the dollar amount was. Um, page 44, item 4.10, the office security. I want to tell you that as a member of the public, the security um, upgrade is rather uncomfortable for the public visiting the office. I was there recently and I had to stand in the doorway holding the door open. And um, that's, that's not comfortable for the customers and it's not very energy efficient for winter time or summer cooling. So I, I don't know if it's been changed. It's been about six weeks ago, I guess I was there. And um, it's not very comfortable for the public. On um, page 47, item 4.12, the um, extension of the contract with Montgomery. I think a five-year contract is too long, and I think it should be put out to bid and, and to uh, invite the contractors that Santa Cruz City works with. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any uh, comments from board members? Okay, uh, then I guess I should go for a motion here. I'll move, I'll move approval as amended. Second. I think it's all in favor, right? Uh, no, we have to do. With roll Tom, call. yeah, roll call. So Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director Lather? Yes. Director LeHue? Yes. And President Christensen? Yes. All right. Oh. Uh, we're at number item 5.0, 
oral and written communications. Uh, this is an opportunity for members of the public and board members to comment an item, make comment on items that are not addressed in the agenda. Thank you, Becky Steinberger. I was happy to see um, Director Daniels's letter of resignation included in correspondence. And um, I appreciate that that was included for transparency. And again, I wish him well. I really do. Um, I, I want to provide to your board, I'm going to hand a copy to Ms. Western here and ask that she copy and make it available to all of you. These are documents that I think your board needs to review. I'm reviewing a lot of documentation around the Pure Water SoCal project and all of its modifications and all of the public comment that has come in over the time since the EIR was first certified in 2018. And there are two documents that I've come across that I really, really made, gave me pause and I think you should review them as well. The first one is a, a technical report from Haley and Aldrich. This was the hydrology company that Cabrillo College asked to do a, an independent analysis of the possible impacts of the uh, injection well, which ended up going into Twin Lakes Church, but at the time it was a possibility it could go on Cabrillo College property. And Cabrillo was worried about how it might uh, affect their private wells. This is a very good report. And it's good, in my opinion, for a lot of reasons, because it questions the placement of injection wells, all of them. And it compares the effects of that placement with what has been done in Orange County and questions the effectiveness of the project's goal. I'd like you to review this. The second document is a um, comment that was submitted on the EIR from Dr. Jude Todd. She is a retired now uh, UCSC professor. She researched and read the EIR very thoroughly, and she provided your board with a lot of very well-informed, educated comment. Um, on issues that I think merit review again. So I'd like to give both of these documents to Ms. Western when I finish my comment and ask that it be given to each of the board members and be made part of the public correspondence. The second, uh, the next thing I'd like to ask is I, I see no, um, well, let me go to the a different topic. The, the new director uh, search needs to have financial um, expertise. You all are great water scientists, but you know what you're asked to do is about money. And I really think it would behoove the board to focus on finding someone with good financial expertise that can look at these figures and help you all. And then the last thing I'll say to wrap up is uh, I'm curious about the quail run tank. When will it ever happen? Thank you. Please be respectful of the time. Oh, yes, I always am. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the board? When, when you distribute the comments from the UCSC professor, could you please um, also distribute how those are responded to by ESA in the EIR? Sure, and also I'll just note, we are very well aware of those documents. They're, you know, old really, and uh, they've been reviewed very thoroughly and all, all things have been taken into consideration. Thank you. Dr. LeHue? Dr. LeHue? Hi, I'm good. You're good? Okay, well. <laughs> We'll take those, your comments under consideration, but I remember them from years ago. Just so you know, we're not completely unaware of them already. Oh, hi, you are. Uh, I'm Ilga Somans, and I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm gonna hopefully apply for the director position. 
and I recognize, well, everybody here, mm. for, because I'm on the water cost, uh, yeah, water cost uh, commi committee. committee. Yeah. Wait, so, yeah. And uh, just want to introduce myself, and I've been to a very few other meetings, but to the meeting to see how it goes. I look forward to talking to you guys at a future date. Thanks. Thank you. Just, just so you know, this is a pretty light meeting scheduled. Very light. Don't get don't get the wrong impression. <laughs> but since we've got got a project and it's we're pushing to get it done on deadline as close to the deadline as possible, that that, that for ourselves, there's not a whole lot of other decision making. <laughs> All right, uh, and we're moving on to 7.1. Request approval of an unconditional isn't, will serve. Isn't there a district council all report? Oh, yes. First? Oh, is there a, oh, sorry. Yeah. But that's okay, President Christian. So I think you read my mind. I actually don't have a report this evening, but I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Was it on the agenda? On the agenda, but not. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry in the about packet. that. Yeah, cruising through that. What does anyone have any questions, Dr. Liu? No, I just I just saw it on the agenda. And just was it. Okay. That's all. Okay. okay, then we'll move to the one. Will serves, which is a project for an unconditional will serve that requires board approval because of the size of the meter. That's right. So this came to the board already back uh, in uh, 2022. And this is an all uh, affordable housing project uh, on Park Avenue, um, close to the freeway, Highway 1. And they are um, moving very fastly through the county's process. And they are ready for an unconditional will serve letter. Uh, this project doesn't necessarily require any uh, district infrastructure to serve. They will front Park Avenue, and they will just have service lines coming off to it. It'll have one uh, master meter and uh, a fire service and a fire hydrant. But all those can be ad administered at uh, the staff level. Um, so if there's any questions, I'm more than happy. They're 36, very small. I think they're less than 500 square feet each. 400. I think, is it considered a transitional? Is this the transitional housing? I think that's how they... It's a, it's a, it's a home key project. Yeah, it's probably needed in the section of the woods here. Um, so, any uh, questions from the public? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I remember when this first came to your board and President Christensen, that was your comment. Like, they seem very small, <laughs> and they are. The units are very small, and um, it's an interesting project because it's a modular built um, apartment complex. There will be really no landscaping at all. But because it is a project, home key um, funded project, as Director Jaffe said, I wonder if it's possible for your district to request that there be additional water saving um, devices built into the units, um, double plumbing, um, anything at all, because now there is no water demand offset fee that is being charged this project. And so um, conservation still needs to be happening. But without the water demand offset fees to fund your district um, doing them, I think it is incumbent upon the builders to incorporate those water conservation measures into the building design. So I respectfully request that your district um, make the builder aware of this. They are really moving quickly. But the county is, uh, does have a conditional, um, what's it called? Uh, 
conditional permit or something where the county is involved. And I know you have a good relationship with the county. And so I respectfully request that you try to get uh, some sort of conservation measures in terms of building um, conser water conservation, because there really is no uh, landscaping at all that would offer conservation measures. But some type of groundwater recharge would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you want to comment on that for a second? Sure, I'll comment on that. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, I think that's a great idea. And if you look at our water use efficiency requirements that the board has continually um, led the charge on, that indoor and outdoor requirements, um, you can see that we already have built in ahead of what the state, we've always been leaders the district has uh, in conservation measures. And those are baked into our requirements, uh, again, indoor and outdoor. And the fact that they not have an outdoor is just more evidence of, of what I would call water savings. And I think the proof's in the pudding. Just look at our per capita water use. So not only a new development, which is even more uh, efficient, but the existing development through you know, our, our water demand offset program that kind of reached the end of its, its life. So um, rest assured, it'll, it'll be efficient water use in that, in that complex. That's what I would have expected, all brand new fixtures. Any comments from the board? Just one on, on the space. I went back to February 15th of 2022 when this came up, and it does talk about there's a community center, so there is some shared space. 400 feet, square feet. That hey. seems small. And Carla, when you speak, could you speak a little closer to your microphone? I'm okay, having trouble sure. hearing you. Yeah. inches. <laughs> the trouble is the seat's too high for me to squish in very easily. Um, Want me to lower it? Yeah. Get ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gentle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see it. <laughs> There's some shorter people on the city council. <laughs> No, no, just less tall people. Um, okay. Well, um, this is a long overdue project, so um, we're ready. I think we're ready for a vote on this. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director Lather? Yes. Director LeHue? Yes. And President Christensen? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, that was very quick, but uh, we're moving into, I think it's item eight, closed session. And uh, members of the public are permitted to comment on the closed session if they wish. Thank you, um, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, again, I want to say I don't like having to take the legal action that I have and am taking, but it is the only option open to anyone who wants to challenge an environmental action. And again, I really feel that the changes to the Pure Water SoCal project have been many and significant. And um, I really feel that there should have been subsequent EIRs put out for public review with a certain noticed amount of time and a scheduled public hearing. They got none of that. And it gives the impression to the public that, um, well, certainly we know you're streamlining things because of the deadline related to funding, but it also gives the impression to the public, which I don't think you want, that you're hiding things or that you don't care about the public's comment or that um, you're just trying to cut corners for the sake of getting the thing done and pushed out the door. None of which I think is true, but 
by not doing this subsequent EIR and pu notice public hearings, it has in effect done all of that in the public side. And I'm, sp I'm sp speaking for many. <laughs> so uh, what I ask is that you, um, you just know that, that the action I've taken is on behalf of many, I'm taking it for public benefit. And I, I would like you to go down to the Laurel Street Bridge and, and watch for the swallows. Like I said last time, they're not there. And I would like you to take a good hard look at the connection of the conveyance pipe at that bridge, how it has disturbed the levee, and what will happen in another large flood. Thank you. Okay, we're in adjournment here of the public meeting. <laughs>